Taran, 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 taran. Hey, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. This is me, Mr. Christopher Hughes, coming to you live with the first ever Mr. Christopher Show. What's that you say? The Mr. Christopher Show? Yeah, this is my show that I'm going to be doing for you live once a week or thereabouts. You never know what happens. And it's a show where I'm going to talk about whatever's going on, whatever comes up, because you know what? There just aren't any rules. So here we are with the first ever Mr. For Christopher show. That's right. It's not the Mr. Christopher show. It's the Mr. For Christopher show. Already we've got a greeting from Taiwan. People watching all around the world already. We can say this show is international. How does it get any better than this? So the title for this episode one is Living in Chaos. Now, some people think chaos is a bad thing. Some people would go so far as to say it's a dirty word, ladies and gentlemen. But for me, oh, we've got India as well. Hello, India, India and Taiwan. I wonder how many continents and countries we can get tuning into the show today. But to me, chaos is actually one of the most creative states you can have. Now, that being said, chaos and disorder are totally different things. Because one thing I've noticed about myself is if things are messy and disordered, I tend to get a little bit anxious. You know, so many people these days are struggling with this thing called anxiety, where they get stressed and they get panicky and they get worried and worked up if things are not organized and all set up in a row. And I definitely am one of them. So one of the things we're going to talk about today is a couple tools that I use if I'm feeling a little freaked out about everything. Like even last night I was going to bed and I had this overwhelming sense of, <clears throat> oh my God, there's so much going on. And I am I doing enough? Am I handling it enough? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? So we're going to talk about that. But before we do, hi, Christina. If any of you have any questions or things you want to say, comments, anything else, please feel free to post them here in the chat along the side. Um, no, no question is a dumb question from my point of view. You know, there's only dumb people who don't ask their questions. We've got Desiree Dumont here. Yes, chaos. She's a bit of chaos on toast, if you ask me, Miss Desiree Dumont all out there. You could re reinterpret her name to mean desire of the world. And she does. She wants it all. She's my kind of girl. So why are we doing this show, the Mr. Christopher Show? Well, I wanted to start doing something and creating something that was an outlet for me to do all the things that I like to do, whether it was making lunch or having a bath or opening a package that just arrived or showing you guys some of the treasure and things that I've got in my life that I'm excited about. And you know how we all have like things that we're looking at or going through on a constant basis. Do you ever notice that for yourself? You'll have something come up for you and there'll be like a different tool or a different thing you're using to assist you in having ease with it all and getting through it. Harveen from India says, chaos, both my mom and I are COVID positive and mom is in hospital. Harveen, how does it get any better than that? And what can we be to contribute to you and your dear mom with COVID? I was speaking to a couple friends in India uh, and they I was asking them, I said, you know what? From here in Australia, the media is all saying that India is like crumbling because the health system can't cope with all the people that have COVID. And they, I said, is it true? Is this really what's going on? And a few of them said, you know what, actually, it's pretty shit at the moment. So Harveen, I know it's it's it'd be a little glib for someone from the outside world who has a different set of circumstances to say, well, that was an interesting choice. What did you do to choose that? And all of that. So what I'd actually like to ask is what can we be to contribute to you? 
you know, like what is required there in India for people to have more opportunity, more possibility and not have to be the victims of what's going on there. So please know that the universe, from my point of view, is a benevolent, kind and generous place. And if there's anything you require, you've got to learn to ask for it. And the way I see the universe working, if we're going to start off on this track of like really going up, going um, from a sort of a philosophical point of view or an energetic point of view, you ask a question, like say you require assistance with something or you require some change. You ask a question and that actually physically changes. It sets out a wave of mo of energy and it actually physically starts to change everything around you. So what, what could we all be asking for to have more ease and more possibility? Not just if you're COVID positive or have something like that in your life that is a problem, quote unquote, but just to have more ease and more peace and more space. Like I say, right now, I've got a lot of disorder, quote unquote, in my house around me here where I live in Brisbane, Australia, because we're renovating. And if you've ever lived through renovation, it's a lot of dust. It's a lot of mess. It's a lot of disorder. It's an adventure every day to just get dressed. You have to go, right, where are the shoes? And you have to crawl under one table and up onto another to find where they are. I can show you a little bit later what it's like because you know a lot of people who don't know me or they just see things going on for you on social media you know because on social media so many people are trying to show you an image of their life rather than how they actually live and they show you the beautiful restaurants they went to or the clothes they bought or the friends that they have having a great time out at a nightclub but they don't necessarily show you Oh, well, you know, the bathroom needs a clean and there's uh, a little chaos everywhere. And again, there's that chaos word. What if it wasn't such a bad thing? To me, chaos is that sort of energetic soup that the universe is that you can draw from to add things to your life at, at, uh, at your request. So, Harveen, you're welcome for the contribution. Yeah, and... Great. So Harveen's saying here that she uses the tool, who does it belong to? Awesome tool. For those of you who've never heard of this tool, who does it belong to? Essentially, it's acknowledging that all of us are incredibly aware and incredibly psychic. And you constantly are receiving this download like a radio tower of all this crazy information coming to you. My husband is incredible at this. If I come home and I've had too much to drink, he'll get the hangover because he wants to take care of me. So he pulls it out of my body and into his. How do you explain that? It always seems to happen. You know, they, they try to explain it psychologically when husbands who have a pregnant spouse start to get pregnancy symptoms. You know, they call it sympathetic. But some of you are so aware that you are incredibly sympathetic to the world around you. So yeah, with the COVID thing, are you trying to take it on to heal it and fix it for those around you, like in your mother's body? But also another tool that I would use here, how to look at this is, if it wasn't a problem, what possibility could it create and what doors could it open up? Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like I was looking at, um, we have antique shops here in Australia and over the years we've had lots of staff come along and some of them have been awesome and some of them hmm, maybe not so great. One of the staff members that we have right now at the Antique Guild and I'm going to post the Antique Guild's um, website for you to have a go have a look if you're interested because we have this brother and sister right now who are doing all of our photographs and videos and things. We have an awesome YouTube channel. But we got those guys from another person that we'd hired. And that person wasn't actually a good fit for the business. And you could have, we could have made ourselves wrong for hiring them. But when he came along, it was like, 
yeah, I'm going to hire you. And the energy is just saying, yes, yes, yes. Now it was clear within a few weeks of working there that this wasn't the right guy for our store, but through him, we got this brother and sister combo that have been such an amazing and dynamic contribution that may not have found us without that choice. So look, COVID is creating enormous change. It is, it, yes, it is killing people and that is horrible. And also when the black plague came along, the great, the, you know, the great plague that came along in the Renaissance. Well, it actually was one of the things that started the Renaissance. It came through and it killed a lot of people. It totally changed the economy. It totally changed public sanitation. There was a lot of things that there were trickle on effects that all occurred because of the great, the black plague. That's what started the Renaissance. And what does Renaissance mean, but rebirth? There was this surge of creativity and rebirth that occurred after that plague. What if we could have that again? What if we could have a renaissance of creation and intelligence and birth and growth after going through what is COVID? I was having a conversation with a friend just the other day. It was up on the Sunshine Coast north of Brisbane and we were having a walk on the beach in the morning and he said, so when all of this is over, will you go back to traveling as much as you used to? And I said, you know what? I don't think anything is ever gonna go back to the way it was. Everything is so different now, so fundamentally changed over the last year and a half that there is no back to normal. And I mean, I, for one, think that's kind of a good thing. I mean, how many meetings did we used to go to that actually could have been held on Zoom like this? What's Desiree Dumont saying here in the chat? She says, desire itself is chaos. That's true. I always made myself desiring for so many different things simultaneously. Can you talk about chaos of having more than you think you deserve and more than you can handle? and more than you can even comprehend and not slipping into havoc and disorder and grumpy control freak. Yeah, well, there you go. You know, a lot of times, I mean, I was speaking with an artist the other day, I had a right voice for you class, and there was this artist that came to the class from Cape Town, South Africa, and she's making these pieces of art, and some of them incorporate um, meteorites that have fallen to earth and she's doing these like weird things and she's pricing her pictures in Bitcoin and doing some things that no one's ever done before. So she's getting a lot of attention, a lot of attention and it's freaking her out. And she's going, I don't think I can handle it all. I need to control how many people are writing to me and how many people are trying to buy my art. And if you really want the explosive creativity that chaos can bring, you've got to get out of control. You know, like the thing I was talking about for me, the place where I get anxious and start to freak out a little bit is when things are a mess. This renovation period in my house, there's a lot of mess. And it's been so good for me to go, this mess that I'm in the middle of right now is here because we're in the process of creating something greater. Yeah, explosive chaos. I love that idea too, you know? And, it, and chaos is not the same as, um, what's another word or another way to describe what people think chaos is? It's not, recklessness recklessness is where you are unaware of what you're choosing and what you're creating but chaos is where you take the order out of something and you often also take the conclusion out of something have you ever noticed like say you work for a business and everything is on maintenance mode like 
say it's a business where they've been getting a good result doing a certain thing. And so they just keep doing the same thing over and over again, and it starts to get stale. I've noticed that in my business, when things start to get stale like that, I will choose something or add something to instill a bit of chaos and get people creating again, rather than assuming that things are going to work a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Greetings, Tanya Pellegrini. Yeah, Christina, from my point of view, this mess that we live in is just a process to access something greater. Absolutely. How much greater, like, things being all lined up and all your ducks being in a row, so to speak, how much control do you have to exercise to keep them that way so they never grow into something greater? And and as a result, like you ever had somebody in your life or, or even in yourself notice a place where you are resistant to change or letting something go? That's because you're not willing to have the chaos that would actually allow all of your conclusions to go away and it to be greater. But to, in order to have that, quite often what I find is you actually have to be willing to lose it. Like say that same example with your business, like if your business is going really well and it's um, getting a result, it can take real bravery and vulnerability to go, I'm going to potentially lose this if I choose the chaos that I'm about to, but I'm bored and I'm ready for something greater and I know something else is possible. It's like for me, I get that, like that thing of anxiety I keep talking about. So many people these days deal with anxiety or depression or whatever you want to call it, getting panicky. If I'm not creating, if I'm not busy putting something in motion or starting a new project, I get quite out of sorts, quite anxious, even depressive. And I need that energy constantly growing and changing. Otherwise, I actually start to destroy things. You know, like in my businesses, if they're not constantly implementing something new or starting a new project or, or reaching for that next level of growth, I start to get a little bored and pull things apart because it's not going where I know it could. I mean, I know so many of you out there like this Desiree, someone who desires. Like what if your desire and your drive for more was one of the greatest gifts you could have. That being said, I did see a really funny quote yesterday. And it said, all the dead people on Mount Everest were once very ambitious people. So maybe we should all relax a bit. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Desiree says, I notice I stop my true explosive chaos with my OCD tendencies. I even become an organized grump. Is chaos the opposite of OCD? Yeah, for sure. OCD. But so OCD sometimes, though, like can be the awareness of more or the awareness of being OCD, or as it's called in this reality, obsessive compulsive disorder, can be an, an acute awareness of a detail that others don't have. Like say, for example, in, in my marriage, my husband is an interior designer. He sees details in things that I don't. He has a heightened awareness of things in those areas. And you could call that being OCD or being preoccupied with the nitty gritty and the details, but it could also be an awareness of just a, a different level of awareness of what something could be 
or what something actually is. Do you know, like with the knowledge that I have of antiques and jewelry and gemstones, I see things other people don't when I look at an auction catalog or walk through an antique shop because I have the awareness. Like imagine walking through a forest just as you are and you know things about plants and nature that can't be explained. And if you spent years cultivating that awareness and growing it and learning more, how richer the experience is when you walk through it that way. Like there is so much more available to be aware of with everything is what I'm trying to say. So I don't think chaos is the opposite of OCD. I think chaos is an awareness of everything and a willingness to choose that which will start the ripple effect that will go all the way through even to the minute details that you might be asking to change. So what else have we got going on? Christina is saying losing control to get greater takes bravery and vulnerability. Yeah, absolutely. You got to be willing to lose things in order to have them. Because if you're not actually willing to lose them, you don't ever have them. And if you want to create something greater, you got to be willing to let it go. From my interesting point of view, you know? So, I'm excited. I'm excited about more. No, I was going to tell you some more tools about of, of what to, um, how to handle things like anxiety and stress and when things are bothering you because they're messy or as Desiree puts it, your OCD is kicking in and you're like freaking out. Um, make sure when you're having that freak out that you're not looking from a judgmental point of view like it's super easy to look at things and with that OCD or that heightened awareness be super duper critical and only see what you've decided the problems are or what's wrong with a situation you know like walking into a room that you've designed and only seeing the flaws and the problems rather than see this is what helps me when I'm feeling anxious like this is Instead, look at, well, what's great about it? What is working? What can we accentuate and what can we um, expand that is actually working and growing? Rather than getting into the mode of constantly fixing the problem. Because none of us want to be de devote our whole life to fixing problems, right? Like, what if instead of fixing problems, you looked at, what can I be or do to create greater and expand what is wonderful and working and phenomenal and magical? That's a huge one for me. This is a tool that I use a lot. I'd like to invite all of you to run with it. Instead of looking at the problem, ask to see the possibility like with the COVID thing we've been talking about. What if instead of seeing the problem, ask to see the possibility? And that possibility might be further in the future than we care to realize. Like imagine what we will see as this time of history 50 years from now. Like how many changes have we put in place that we are not going to actually see the result of immediately? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Are you hearing me? Do you get me? Hey, there's Ina Basur. Ina Basur is tuned in watching us from speaking of India. Yeah. There's, instead of seeing the problem, ask to see the possibility. There's an amazing dude out there called Steve Bowman. Stephen Chutissa Bowman is incredible. Love these people. And Steve Bowman does seminars 
a lot working with not-for-profit people and, and on entrepreneurship and governance, different issues. And he said, and it changed my life when I heard him say it, that every problem you have is a possibility that you've attached a point of view to. And what he meant by that, if you want to expand and unpack that, is that for something to be a problem, you have to be looking at it from one angle only. You've taken a point of view and that's how you're seeing this issue. Instead of shifting focus and looking at it from a different angle and seeing how you could possibly use that situation and create greater with it. Like the way I explain this, and again, the tool that I use here, because I really want you guys to, anyone tuning in now and in the future, I'd like to not only have fun and be me and have a voice in the world, but I'd like you guys to be able to take something from any of these episodes you choose. And A, I'd like you to laugh, because you know what? Laughing, I think, is one of the most healing things. But I'd like you to take something away you can use. And my point of view is, none of you actually have problems. What you have are symptoms that were created by choices you made that were motivated by points of view that you have. That's the way I see it. Your whole life, from what I can tell, is created by you based on a point of view that you have. Let's say that your point of view is life is hard. If that's your point of view, you will create situations and you will choose situations to prove that you're right and create what you then might end up calling a problem. No, you ain't wrong. Like say the, how another way to put this, I was talking to a friend of mine about his mother and he was saying that she was like this fierce mama bear and she would protect you with everything she got. And she always needed to tell him that she had his back. And if there was a crisis, she would solve it. But then he realized if there was no crisis, she would create one so that she could solve it because she needed to prove that she could fix crises. Like, how much are we all doing that? Like, if you really were willing to be bluntly honest with yourself and figure out what your points of view actually are in every area of your life, you'd see why you're choosing to create what you create. Like, what's your point of view about money? How is that playing out? What are your points of view about your business? And how many of those points of view are you trying to prove are correct with your business? There's no right or wrong answer in it. And finding out what your point of view is, you're not wrong. It's not bad. It's just important to have a look and find out where you actually sit with those things. So, you know what? I think this brings episode one of the Mr. For Christopher show to a close. I'd like to thank you all for joining me. I will be doing a, I have a free class on tomorrow on Zoom, actually, for those of you who are interested. Um, I will see if I can send you the registration link now, or if uh, I will, I'll just stall for a moment. This is me stalling. Da -da 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 da 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 no, I don't know how to register for it. Well, maybe Ina does. And anyway, there's a class there. I'm doing a free Zoom tomorrow called Let's Get Engaged. Oh, I know how to find it. I know how to find it. I can find it for you. It's called Let's Get Engaged, and it's about business and creating engagement with you and your business and what engagement actually is. I've noticed a lot of people with their business say, they say, I've, I've promoted this class everywhere. And what they mean by that is they've put it on 
Facebook. And that's their whole thing. Oh, look, Ina already got it for you. This is free and it's tomorrow, um, depending on where you are in the world. And if you register, you'll get the recording if you can't be there. I think we have room to have about a thousand of you online and there's like 600 people signed up so far. So we would love to have you there. Um, but this show, the Mr. Christopher show, will be on every week, give or take, different topics. You know, it'll be what it'll be. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. So thank you all for joining me. Can't wait to see you next time. And if any of you are interested in being a cameo appearance, making a guest spot on the Mr. Christopher show, you know, let's see what can happen. Bye-bye.